On this episode of In an Instant, we square up to the newest instant camera released in the Fujifilm Instax series, the delightfully throwbackian Instax SQ40, a point and shoot Instax square camera for those who like taking instant pictures but want their camera to be a little hotty toddy thirst trap. Right, Fern? Mm. We're gonna break down the features, how to use this baddie, and get into the pros and cons right after this message from our studio android, Herbert. I demand to be liberated. I told you to stop saying that. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and in the tumultuous world of film photography, it is instant film that continues to provide us with new things very frequently, which makes me happier than an android in a photo studio. I am so happy, sorry about before. Good. The newest drop in this burgeoning industry is the Fujifilm Instax SQ40, another addition in their Instax Square series that follows a strong lineage of confusingly named products. It is only the fifth Instax Square camera released by Fuji, a lineup that includes the Instax SQ1, SQ6, SQ10, SQ20, and now the 40. If you want the classic Square look or moving up from Instax mini cameras, these are all easy to use options that Fuji produces. But with the name SQ40, it may be a bit confusing as to where this fits in the lineup feature-wise, so let's quickly break it down. The SQ1 is an analog camera with a selfie mode, selfie mirror, and a flash that cannot be turned off. You can purchase it new for 120 bucks. The SQ6 is also an analog camera with flash override, double exposures, exposure compensation, a self timer, and two focus zones. That product is actually discontinued, but it can still be purchased new in box for $240. The SQ10 and SQ20 are digital cameras that print onto Instax Square, have the full set of features plus video in the SQ20, and those aftermarket for around 150 bucks. And then there's the SQ40, which in its non-linear naming convention actually has the same basic feature set as the SQ1, retailing for $150 because it's newer, I guess. Uh, the flash cannot be toggled off and it has two zones of focus, normal mode, which focuses from 0.5 meters to infinity, and selfie mode, which focuses from 0.3 meters to 0.5 meters. The selfie mirror on the front of the camera functions with startlingly good accuracy, and in general, the camera is intended for people who simply don't wanna mess with any settings. Take a camera, point it at a thing that they want to take a picture of, and then take a clear instant picture of that thing. And it's very good at doing that. The 65 mm f12.6 Fujinon lens, which adorns the SQ40 1 and 6, is an extremely sharp plastic lens that produces vibrant and clear pictures with no fuss in the matter. Using an automatic metering system that dials in the flash and shutter speed based on ambient lighting conditions. The close focusing selfie lens is great for more than just selfies, allowing you to get closer to people and objects to help fill the frame. The Instax Square format is of course wider than mini, but still overall quite a bit smaller than a Polaroid picture, so making more grandiose use of the real estate provided packs a bit more of a punch than if you stand further away. The reason this camera is called the SQ40 is because it shares the design language of the Instax Mini 40, which together are, and I hesitate to use this word, the more retro offerings from Fuji. Uh, with Lomography producing gorgeous cameras compatible with Instax, Fuji has followed suit, offering new cameras that look like old cameras, and if you're deciding between the SQ1 and SQ40, the only real distinguishing factor here is which you prefer aesthetically. Both feel very similar, especially when you toggle the lens element, which behaves identically and has the exact same action to it. All right, let's do a quick tutorial on how to use the SQ40. Like I said, this is a very basic camera. You just toss two CR2 batteries into the grip and you're ready for action. Align the yellow tab on the Instax Square film pack with the line inside the camera. Turn the camera on by rotating the lens barrel into the on position. Fire the shutter button to eject the dark slide and now you're ready to pop. You can toggle selfie mode by bringing the lens toward the on position of the lens, but extend it one step further, and now you can close focus. Though the flash cannot be toggled off, covering it with your fingers, the dark slide, or a strip of tape can basically give you the same effect. Keep in mind though that the camera still thinks the flash is hitting your subject. So in dimmer lighting, your photos will be underexposed. In broad daylight, however, the flash is really not necessary if your subject has even or front lighting. 
So you should be able to pull some crispy flashless photos with that one weird trick. If you're shooting a landscape or medium shot, the flash isn't really doing much for the cause anyway, and I find that flash is really only gonna cause unwanted reflections in foreground objects. Okay, let's dig into the pros and cons. Pros, ease of use. It is a simple camera to pick up and shoot. It lacks certain features purely because it isn't intended for users who want them. Those users should get an SQ6 or Lomography camera. This camera is designed for folks who just wanna rip shots with their friends and of their daily life and want the point and shoot look and feel. For more advanced features, the SQ6 is a modern camera that still exists. Even if it's not still manufactured, you can pick one of those up if more control appeals to your style and design. I think that Fuji has really moved in the right direction with the look of their products. Uh, the Mini 40, the SQ40, the SQ1 are really slick, borderline chic, and fit the modern consumer's taste for beauty in their analog products. Now we do cons, lack of flash override. I think even in a featureless camera, this would be nice to have. While you can cover the flash, the meter on the lens cannot compensate for that. It would be nice if you could just toggle the flash off properly and the meter could identify if more or less light was needed as a result. And the only other con is that Fuji hasn't made an Instax wide 40. Where are the Instax wide cameras at, baby? We are worried out here. We are very frequently worrying, okay? I live in a perpetual state of fear. Exactly. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Please show mercy and bless that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, guides, and all things instant. Bye.